Uh, I think this is a, uh, a highly coveted award uh, and an extremely meaningful one to the faculty precisely because the best teaching uh, at the GSB is among the best in the world. Uh, our faculty are dedicated to our joint mission of educating change agents uh, and they pour an enormous amount of innovation and energy uh, into their teaching and as you know uh, it shows up in many, many different classes. Um, we will honor one specific professor today, but I would ask you to take a moment to cast your mind over the set of the best classes that you've had at the GSB and to reflect on the impact that all of those professors have had on you. Uh, when I meet with alumni, uh, I'm always struck by how many of them uh, think back to specific classes they took at the GSB, to professors who really changed their lives. They can even think back to specific class sessions or concepts or ideas that have had a meaningful impact on them throughout their lives and careers. Uh, and I think that's testament to uh, the quality of teaching at the GSB. Uh, the fact that we have teaching that is as uh, of high quality as it is, uh, is especially impressive because we have a model, as you know, at the GSB of not just pursuing excellence in teaching, but pursuing, pursuing balanced excellence, excellence in both uh, the creation of knowledge and ideas, as well as the dissemination of those ideas. And so uh, certainly uh, past winners, and I'm sure it's true, uh, of, uh, of today's still secret winner uh, are people who are Six Sigma not just uh, in teaching but Six Sigma as well uh, in research and if you remember your D&D &D lessons being Six Sigma on both uh, is really pretty, uh, pretty extraordinary. Unlike uh, performance art, uh, great teaching doesn't happen in front of an audience. It's, uh, it's a collaboration between the professor and the students, and so I think uh, in addition to celebrating today's winner, we also celebrate uh, your participation in making our classes uh, what they are, and, uh, and we thank you for that. Uh, so uh, in sum, I congratulate today's winner in advance, uh, but also all the faculty and staff, and I now turn things over to Lauren to announce the winner. How will you measure what you've learned in your time here? for this award are any indication of that, you will leave here with a profound sense of gratitude for at least one professor who has changed the course of your GSB experience. Maybe someone has nudged you in a direction you weren't sure you were up for. Maybe someone has prepared you to take on challenges down the road that you don't even yet know exist. Maybe someone has readied you in some way to tackle the messy and intractable problems that we all want to help set right in the world. This is the 31st year that GSB students have given this award to honor exactly that kind of professor. Each year we choose five students to oversee this process of naming the GSB's single best example of teaching excellence. This year's committee includes MBA 2's Raid Ahmad, Blake Nesbitt and Dan Stanko, and MBA 1's Anna Christie and me, Lauren Keene. We also want to thank the Academic Committee for administering this award, especially Megan Meyer, Nicole Hallerman, and Scott Hughes, and the many supportive members of the GSB administration, including Dean Saloner, Madhav Rajan, Margaret Hayes, Suzanne Richards, and Jamie Shine. You as students collectively submitted more than 150 nominations for 44 of your most beloved professors. Many of those appeals were passionately argued, sprinkled liberally with exclamation points. Many of you wanted us to contact you in person to meet so that you could make your case even more adamantly. Some of these professors have already changed the course of your professional lives. So it's clear to the five of us that this community has no shortage of distinguished teachers. And choosing a single one to honor this year was not easy. We scrutinized your recommendations. We read between the lines on many, many years worth of course evaluations. 
We debated contributions to cl curriculum development and involvement with students outside the classroom. With three finance guys on the committee, we also made a lot of pivot tables. <laughs> but before we announce this year's winner, we want to share with you some excerpts from your many glowing nominations across the GSB faculty. And I'll share four. Every professor teaching a first year class should be required to watch Francisco Perez Gonzalez teach. If the GSB was filled with more professors like him, it would truly be a remarkable place. Mary Barth's class is the most inspiring class I have taken in my first year. What sets her apart is her flexibility to incorporate materials from the news on a daily basis, which allows us to see the practical applicability as opposed to just theoretical concepts. I needed help over the summer when working on an operations case, and Robert Swinney replied to me within 24 hours. He also promised to follow up with further insights. Not many professors will take time out of their vacation to do that. And finally, Jonathan Burke taught CAT with real passion to challenge the class's preconceptions, assumptions, and biases. A thorough academic framework plus the messy compromises that have to be made when running a business. So amid this stellar group of peers, this year's winner stood out for dedication to both students and curriculum. Your descriptions, frankly, speak for themselves. So I'll read a few. An uncanny ability to answer complex questions and cover complex topics in simple terms the whole class could understand. Created an atmosphere in the classroom where questions or mere expressions of confusion were always welcomed. It was a place where I felt like I could say, I don't get it at all. The response was always supportive and never condescending. Solicited and accepted student feedback and gracefully changed practices in real time based on our comments. On our study trip, had an incredible, genuine desire to get to know students and to share a point of view towards the issues we were studying following the coffee industry in Guatemala. She encouraged us to stretch our way of thinking about international businesses and the challenges faced by each part of the value chain. Her teaching excellence was reflected in the extended, rumbling, desk-banging round of applause that she received on the last day of class. And finally, she is not flashy and entertaining. Rather, she is earnest and direct. She challenged us and made us think, I did not get the highest grade in her class, but I had the highest level of learning. On behalf of the entire student body, we're honored to present the 2013 Distinguished Teaching Award to a professor who works tirelessly to make sure that every one of us, regardless of what background we came here from, has a solid foundation on which to build the rest of our MBA education. Please join us in congratulating Professor Ann Beyer. Thank you. Thank you for nominating me, and thank you to the student uh, committee for selecting me. Um, thank you, Dean Salona and Lauren, for the kind introductions. I'm really honored and humbled to be here today. You've honored me with the introduction or the membership to a group of people uh, who have been publicly recognized for their excellence in teaching at this very fine institution. Not only are the recipients from previous years fantastic teachers. Um, they've also been generous enough to share their insights with others, including myself. I still remember of Grouse Beck and Joel Peterson and Ilya Svepislaev at various panels on teaching excellence, delineating the high standards that they have for 
themselves and their students. And I also remember Mary Barr's lecture on teaching by the case method. In fact, I still own the DVD. And to put this honor in some perspective, I'd like to share with you a little bit about my past. In 2006, I came to Stanford as a rookie PhD from Northwestern, where I had predominantly focused on research, and my professional speaking efforts basically consisted of monologues in my office with like um, my laptop and the whiteboard in the audience. And um, now I was like hugely excited about becoming an assistant professor here at Stanford. It's a great school, I have great colleagues, and yes, the weather is a bit easier than in Chicago. Nonetheless, teaching seemed somewhat daunting to me. Um, especially compared to my previous professional speaking efforts. Um, standing in front of a classroom with 70 pairs of eyes staring at me wasn't exactly something I was looking forward to. Well, it turned out that having the entire class look at you all the time is in fact wishful thinking. But more importantly, I've learned some other things since those early days as a somewhat naive rookie professor. And the most important is that teaching can be incredibly rewarding and often great fun. And that's the one thing I'm utterly grateful for, that teaching, which is an immensely significant aspect of my professional life, has unexpectedly turned out to be something that I truly, truly enjoy. And for that, I thank you all. Posing myself the question, you know, when do I enjoy teaching the most? The answer is clear. I enjoy teaching the most when as many of you as possible participate in the classroom discussion. But active classrooms, for me, they don't just happen. They require a lot of preparation. It's a bit like sort of the piano recital as a teenager where you practice for weeks for like the three and a half minutes on stage. Um, but the great thing here at the GSB is that all that preparation, I didn't have to do it by myself. And today gives me the chance to thank some of those that helped, uh, some of those people who helped me sort of, um, sort of with the teaching material and with endless advice along the way. The first person I would like to thank is Elon Goodman, with whom I taught for the first couple of years and with whom I discussed every aspect of the course. And by every aspect, I mean like every page in the course reader, every slide in the handout, and yes, every exam and every question on every exam. I'd also very much like to thank Ron Kasnick for sharing boundless material and for letting me sit in his class back in 2006. Uh, to this day, I try to emulate the energy and like the clarity that he portrays in the classroom. He also taught me that accounting classes should be sort of similar to Disney movies. There must be something in it for both kids and adults, or in our context for people with and without background in accounting. And finally, I'd like to thank Madhav Rachan for invaluable advice uh, on just about any aspect related to teaching, from like whether to include an overly witty question in exam, don't do it, to how to maintain fairness while trying to accommodate all kinds of student requests. But all of the preparation wouldn't yield much result if it weren't for you. You're an amazing group of people, and you've kept me on my toes, and I've learned a tremendous amount from you over the years. I've learned about industries of the companies whose financial statements we covered and uh, that you sort of worked for before coming to the GSB. I've also learned about like, how to explain things in a way that they are more easily understood. But yes, I've also learned about accounting, because whenever your question sort of made me uh, stumble in the classroom, then I knew it was time to sort of go back, sit down, think about it, and maybe write a paper. I was able to take away so much from the classroom because you participated in each class with insightful comments and great clarifying questions. And for that, I thank you all. Which brings me back to what, for me, makes a successful class, participation by all of you. Some of which is voluntary and some of which is a little bit less voluntary, but of course, I hope that it wasn't just me who benefited from all that class participation. 
all of you could have studied financial accounting by yourself. After all, it's not rocket science. Right? But I do hope that by studying it together, it was easier, the concepts became clearer, and our discussion added some color to the numbers on the financial statements. And therefore, I also hope that you'll always remember how much information is contained in financial statements and that financial accounting offers a framework to analyze business transactions. Right? Like, when should we recognize revenue? Or when do we sort of just disclose an obligation versus recognize a liability on a balance sheet? Or uh, when we spend some resources, was something of value created? You know, should we recognize an asset or should we record an expense? Because after all, the balance sheet equation has to hold, always. Right? Uh, or in the words of the man who invented it all, Luca Pacchioli, a person should not go to sleep at night until the debits equal the credits. <laughs> I want to close with two additional quick thank yous. Uh, first to my parents. Uh, I'm lucky to have them visiting from Europe right now, and they have been incredibly supportive during my career, despite the fact that I moved uh, across one ocean and roughly one and a half continents. So, Mom, Dad, thank you so much. <laughs> and to my fiancé, who can see the positive in about anything. Finally, uh, with a thank you to the deans, first for letting me find my own style in the classroom, and most importantly, for letting me teach Accounting 210 again this fall. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. <laughs>